Welcome back everyone to this new tutorial. So now we're going to be creating this nice realistic mod material from scratch using procedural texturing in Blender. All right then, so let's get down to it. All right, so here we are in a new Blender scene. So what I'd like to do is to delete everything. So let's press A, X and delete everything. And what I'd like to do is to add a sphere. So shift A, let's go to mesh and let's add a UV sphere. So I'm going to just zoom into it by scrolling the mouse, right click, shade smooth. And here on the bottom, I'd like to switch or expand first the timeline like this. And I want to switch it to this uh, shader editor so that we can be able to tweak the notes or to tweak our material. All right, so here I'd like to press new and let's add a new material. Let's call it mod material. So by default, we got the principal PSDF and the material output. But also what I'd like to do is to be able to check our material. So what I'd like to do is to work a little bit on the lighting. So right now, if we press Z and switch the render mode, so everything is gonna be gray and boring. So what we need to do is to go first to the render properties. I'd like to switch the engine to the cycle engine. And here on the shader editor, I'd like to switch to the word so that you can be able to adjust the lighting, the word lighting. So on this, I'd like to add the sky texture. So shift A and let's search for a sky texture. This node. I'd like to connect the color to the color. I'm gonna just keep it as default. So we got some nice lighting going on, but I'd like to reduce a little bit the strength. But also for the strength, I'd like to reduce it a little bit down. So on this background, I'd like to reduce the strength to something like just 0.5 or yeah, 0.5 is gonna be fine. All right, so now we're ready to go. So I'm gonna just go back, switch from the word to the object so that we can start working on our mud material. So the first thing that I'd like to do is to add the water puddles. So to, to do that, I'd like to start with the noise texture. So shift A and let's search for a noise texture, not the white noise, but the noise texture. And I'd like to, we can go ahead and connect the factor to the base color so that we can check it out. So I'm gonna just press Z, switch back to the material preview. So now we got our noise texture applied. So what I'd like to do is to tweak it a little bit by using the color ramp. So shift A, let's search for color ramp and just put it on the top of this line so that we can have it at the middle. So basically the goal is to kind of separate the black from the white so that we can use the black as puddles, water puddles. So on the color ramp, I'd like to uh, jump or to switch between these, switch these two handles. I'd like to take the white to the left side and the black, I would like to put it at 0.6. Let me just put it here. So this is the position of the handle. And for the white handle, I'd like to put it at 0.5. So now they're going to be pretty much close. You can see that we're separating both colors. But we're lacking the details. If we zoom in into these kind of edge line, it's gonna be lacking much more details. So what I'd like to do is to increase the detail here to 7.5. All right, so that's awesome. So now we have enough details to work with. Also, in order to keep everything organized, what I'd like to do is to select these two nodes. I'd like to put them inside a frame. So basically these are the water puddles. Let me just control space to maximize this. And I'm gonna press Shift A and go to the layout and search for a frame. We can click on this frame and I'd like to put the noise texture inside it as well as the color ramp. Let me just put it at the center. Also, we can add a label to this frame. Let me select it first. I'm gonna press N and here we have the, the frame. So for the label, let's call it water puddle. Puddles, right? So now we got it right here, just in the sake of keeping everything organized. You can also change the color of this frame. So for example, I can give it a light yellowish or some, some color like this, red, red color. All right, so the next step is gonna be to add little stones or little rocks that's gonna be on our mud material. So to do that, we're gonna be using a different texture. It's gonna be the Musgrave. So I hope I'm, pronounce, I'm pronouncing it right. So shift A, let's search for Musgrave. Musgrave like this, Musgrave texture, we got it. So what I'd like to do is to connect it to a color ramp, but also we can give it a check. So let me control space, go back, and I'm gonna just go ahead and connect it to the base color to see how it looks like. Let's connect it straight to the base color. All right, so it looks similar to the, the white noise or the noise texture, but check this out. If we add, for example, a color ramp, so shift A, I'm gonna be searching for a color ramp. We need to tweak it. So the color ramp is the tweaker. So we can check it a little bit up so that we can see this better. So for the scale, I'd like to increase the scale to, for example, 15. So we're gonna be having two types of stones, little stones and a little bit of large stones. So here on the color ramp, I would like to set the black to be on 0.45. 
And as you can see, we got some small object that looks pretty much good. So all we have to do is to increase the amount of details that we got here. So we can increase the Musgrave detail here to five. And for the dimension, I'd like to reduce it down to 0.5 like this. So it's a little bit, actually we start losing that. So let me just try to decrease, increase this up. Gonna just keep it at 0.75 or even 0.85. So we need to have these kind of small objects. But I think we need to increase the size of, or the scale, let me go with 25. All right, looks pretty much good. But also here, let me try to bring these close to each another. So we need to have, have them as units, small units, something like this. I think it has to do also with this dimension. I'm gonna just go ahead with one. So one looks fine. All right, excellent. So what I'd like to do right now is to add the small stones so we can consider these as large stones. So what I'd like to do is to simply duplicate these two nodes. Shift D, duplicate them down like this. All right, let me just put them like this and let's add the mix RGB so that we can mix between the two. So Shift A, let's add the mix RGB. I'd like to put it here and let's connect the first color to the color number one and the second color to the second slot, which is color number two. And after that, we can connect it to the base color. So basically now I would like to check my little stones so they are not visible. So we can increase the scale here. Let me try to increase it to, let me try to increase it to 75. So now as you can see, we have small objects, which is pretty much good. So we get, we're having that variation that we need in our material. So also we need to reduce this black color. So here on the color map, let me select the black handle, click on this black color. And I'd like to set it, for example, on the V to 0.14. So that we can have that gray color. Same thing here. Let's do the same thing for the top. Set the V to 0.14. All right, so that's looking pretty much good. So now what we need to do is to mix between the water puddles and this stones. Also, we can do this control space. Let me just maximize this window. I'm going to be selecting all these nodes and let's add a new frame. So shift A, let's go to the layout frame I Can just put it here. Let's let me try to select everything, put it inside. All right, we got it. Let me select my frame, press N to jump on this panel and for the label, let's call it stones. All right, we got it. You can change its color. Let's make it I'm gonna check the color. Let's make it, for example, bluish, something like that, just so, so that we can make it stand out. All right, so like I said, we need to combine between the water puddles and the stones. So Shift A, let's search for another mix RGB. So I'm gonna just put it on the top of this line. Oops, I did the, I did that one. So I'm gonna just put it on the top of this line like this. And what I like to do is to combine the color, put it on the top, and the second color number two is gonna be for the stones. So I'm going to press control space to go back so that we can see how our material looks like. All right. So we got, it's a little bit messed up. So actually I don't want to have these uh, stones on this uh, black surface because the black surface is going to be uh, water. So here for the mix type, let me just try this. I'm going to switch to the multiply so that we can multiply both values. And here for the factor, I'd like to increase it a little bit. So as you can see, we don't have those puddles here or those those stones here, but I'd like to increase, for example, the factor to something like 0.85 so that we can have these stones stand out in the final result or probably 0.75. All right, so the last details I'd like to add to our material is if we pay close attention to this surface, for example, it's gonna be empty. We have no details here. So it's gonna be flat once once we add the bumps and the displacement map. So we need to fill this space right now. So to do that, I'd like to add another noise texture. So shift A, let's search for a noise texture, this one. And I'd like to combine this node with this uh, noise uh, texture. So we can put it, for example, here, shift A and search for mix RGB again. And just put it on the top of this line and let's combine the noise texture. I'm gonna combine the factor to the second color. So basically the reason why I'm using the factor is, let me just show you. So if, if we connect, for example, the color of the, of the noise texture straight to the base color, so we're gonna be having these crazy colors that we don't need. So if you use the fact, it's gonna be just like a grayscale. So we're just using the black and white colors. So that's all we need to uh, fill the details in our material. So I'm gonna just connect the factor to the second color. 
and the color here to the base color. So for the type, I would like to set it to multiply and I would like to increase this amount to 0.9. So we need only just subtle bumps. Also here for the noise texture, I'd like to reduce it so you can see that. You can see it's playing in the background. I'd like to reduce the scale to just one. For the details, I'd like to set it to 7.5. Need to have some noisy details. And for the roughness, I'd like to increase it to one. So that we can have those nice bumpy details. You can see the difference. If you are reduce it to zero, you can see the difference. So now all the surfaces of our material are noisy and we have some details to work with. All right, so our next step is gonna be to start developing the color of our material, our mud material. So to do that, let's search again for color ramp. So shift A, let's search for it. Color ramp node, I'd like to put it here. So this one's gonna be for our base color, this node. All right, so what I'd like to do is to add, we need to have three handles. So I'm gonna just press click on this plus so that we can have three handles. So the first handle, I'm gonna just keep it as a default. For the second one, I'd like to put it at 0.173, like this, 173. All right, and for the last one, I'd like to put it at 0 0.227, 227, like this. All right, so now for the color, let's start with the first one, the black, I'm gonna click here, and we need to set the H, 0.14. So just follow with me these uh, combinations, and you're gonna achieve some nice results. So we got 0.14 for the S, 0.22, and for the V, it's gonna be 0.08. So these are the settings that I put as a test. So you're gonna see the results. So for the second handle, let me just click here and set, for example, the H to 0.03 and the S to 0.6. And for the V, it's gonna be 0.03 again. And finally, for the white one, or the white handle, let me, ch let me change its color. So the combination that we're gonna be putting here is again 0.08, like this. Here, 0 0.29, 0 0.29, like 29. And for the V, it's going to be 0.1. All right. All right. So this is going to be our mud material. So it's looking already pretty nice for the color. So now what we need to do is to start working on the reflection. So for that, I'd like to add a new color ramp. So shift A, let's add a new color ramp. So this color ramp, we need to connect first the multiply to the factor. And I'd like to connect the color to the roughness. All right, so we got it reflective, which is pretty much good, but we can tweak it a little bit. I'm gonna take the white handle a little bit to the left side. So now we got this, these spots are rough and we got here, so these spots are glossy. So here we're gonna be having the water. To make this color ramp even more precise, let me show you the settings that I put as a test. So for the black handle, I'd like to put it at 0.05 and we can keep it as black, but for the white, let me just put it at point 0 0.195, like this. And for the color, I'd like to make it a little bit gray, so there is no need to make it completely white. So here I'm gonna put it at 0 0.623, like this. So now let's work on the bumps. As you can see, our material is flat, so let's add the bump node. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and let's search for a bump node. Let me just put it here and I'm gonna bring the multiplier again. Let's connect to the height, to the height, not to the normal, and the normal to the normal. So we got the bumps effect, but it looks pretty much ugly. So what we need to do is to add again a new color ramp. So the color ramp is our saver in this tutorial. So I'm gonna, let me just put it here. So for the black handle, I'd like to put it at 0.1 for the position of it. And the white handle, I'd like to put it at 0.473, like this. All right, so for the color of the white handle, I'd like to make it a little bit subtle. So I'm gonna change the V to 0.623. All right, so we got that. Also here for the strength, I'd like to go with just the quarter, so 0 0.25. All right, so now we, all we need is just this kind of, this illusion of bumps. So that's all we need because now we need to start working on the displacement so that we can make these areas stand out. All right, so now for the displacement map, in order to have it working, so what we need to do is to add a new node. So let me just show you. Just move this material output down here. I'm gonna just press N to hide this panel and Shift A and let's add a displacement map. This node that we got here. So what I'd like to do is to connect, you can connect any map that you want. So in my case, I'd like to connect this uh, map so you can check with different ones. 
So all I need is just the large bump. So I'm going to just use this one. I'd like to connect it to the height here and the displacement to the displacement here. All right, so we got it applied. So what we need to do is to add, tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to add again a color ramp. So shift A, let's add, let's search for a color ramp. And I'd like to put it on top of this line. So basically I'd like to switch these two handles. I'd like to make the, the white on the, this side and the black on the other side. So for the black, I'd like to put it at 0.56 is almost uh, the half and for the v let me just click here and for the v value i like to put it at 0.8 so that you can have several bumps all right so now in order to see the displacement uh, working so what we need to do is to do some change changes to our material so we can click here on the material properties i'd like to scroll all the way down to the settings tab click on it and here for the for the surface we have the displacement i want to check both of these so displacement and bumps so click on it so right now if we press z and switch to the render let me just check we're going to be able to see these uh the details outside like this so we, they are not just flat we're having a real geometry going on outside so also we can do this let me just add the subdivision modifier so that we can have more details to work with you can see this corner here it's really bad so it's happening because our sphere doesn't have enough geometry so it doesn't have enough vertex for this placement to work with. So I'm going to be adding here a subsurface modifier, subdivision modifier. We can increase it up. So let me just, for example, increase it to uh, the fifth level like this. So it's always going to be visible here on the level viewport. So control space. Let me just maximize this. And we can, we can press Z here and switch to the render. And basically that's it. So this is our mod material created from scratch using procedural texture ape. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in future projects. Take care.